Dangerous TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Hi, and welcome to HealthLink. HealthLink is a program that connects home, community, and healthcare. And your regular host, Carol Merton, is not available. Well, she lost her voice. So I'm the B team. I'm David Sherman. And it's always a pleasure to do this kind of program on behalf of my other, of uh, Rogers and uh, Rogers, other Rogers hosts, because, hey, I get to talk to the neatest people. And that's like I have today. I have um, Jaya Kukreja and Isla Graham who are two grade 12 students at St. Mary's High School here in Owen Sound, and they're doing something very unique. It's a kind of, a, it's a very interesting project called the Pencil Project. Who wants to tell me what the Pencil Project is all about? Well, um, I can start us off. So the Pencil Project is basically like our main initiative, which is to collect first generation success immigrants' success stories and from Grand Bruce counties and make a book about them. How did you get to that point? What what drew you to this? So last year, we had created this project underneath DECA, which is this business club that we're a part of at our school. And we, with Havilland Setra, which is also like our other um, partner who has graduated now, but she was a part of the initiation of this project. So we kind of wanted to focus on more of the successes with immigrants rather than the struggles that they've had. But through the interviews, we also touched on like their struggles, but more so how they overcame them. Sure. Now, now I understand that the the immigration or in migration and out migration numbers in Gray County are quite well. When I read them, I'm thinking, hmm, that's something I really didn't know. Right. And I'll just read some of the information that that you gave to to Carol. Between 2009 and 2014, Gray County attracted 20,161 persons through in migration and lost 18,652 to out migration with a net migration resulting in a modest increase of 1,509 persons. Between 2009 and 2014, Bruce County attracted 13,139 persons through in migration and lost 12,913 to out migration with net migration resulting in a modest increase of 226 persons. Why is that a concern? I think it's a big concern because like you can tell by these ratios that a lot of people are leaving. So this is kind of what we wanted to investigate is why people are leaving. And we did conduct a survey that kind of showed like the different local organizations that we have available for newcomers to the community. And we found that a lot of people that have been residing in Gray Bruce for a long period of time, like didn't even know about these organizations. So we kind of wanted to address some of these in our book as well to give the community members more awareness of this. So a lot of people just don't know about them is the main issue, I'd say. What are some of the organizations that uh, we don't know about? Um, well, they yeah, sorry, go. <laughs> uh, well, in downtown, we had the settlement services. That's one of them. They also have a housing department. So if you're if you're uh, struggling with like housing, and they can help you with that. They also have employment centers down at the Y as well that can help you touch up your resume and which actually my mom used too when uh, she first came when we all first came to Canada. Uh, they helped us with like their res my parents' resumes and there's also. Um, by Georgian College, May Ip, she has one too that helps other organizations. Mm -hmm. There's the Welcoming Communities of Grey Bruce and then also the Grey Bruce Local Immigration Partnership. So. Sure, so, so the, there, are, there are organizations that, that, how shall I say, they run under the radar? Yes. Would that be a good way of framing it? Yes. Why do you think this, the, the, that there isn't a higher profile? Uh, is it just that people come and go, or is it just we're not aware? Or what did you did your research show us any give you any reasons as to why um, there these organizations aren't profiled? 
I would probably say just lack of promotion, like in general, like, yeah, or just like less accessible for people to kind of like pick out and be like, oh, this is a resource like in this community. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting question because, um, dare we forget everyone who's come to Great Bruce at one time or another immigrated. They came into, because there were already people here, the right. indigenous was already here, mm -hmm. but we all came at some point. Um, some came from other parts of Canada. Some came from other parts of the world. We've just, mm -hmm. we've just come. So, um, were there any surprises in the the research you did in the stories you heard? Um, in the stories, well, some of the surprises that I found were kind of like a little shocking were that a lot of the stories, like the people in the stories, they face same challenges. So when I came to Canada, for example, I struggled with the language a little bit. And then we interviewed a student um, in one of the books and they also had like similar struggles to me. And in my own journey, I felt like I was alone and there was nobody there to support me, which I know wasn't the case, but you have those moments where you just feel alone. And when I had the opportunity to interview her and I found out more about her story, I was like, wow, like there are others around me who are facing these similar challenges, but you just don't know that because you're just so self-focused on what you are trying to do and what you are trying to overcome. So that was one of the like shocking moments for me, at least. And for me, I would say um, just kind of something that we don't think about a lot, but weather was like a really reoccurring theme that a lot of people had touched on and I don't really like winter that much, but yeah, we don't think about it a lot, but it's very different for the people that immigrate here. Sure, sure. It, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a woman who um, has come to, actually, they came to Grey Bruce, uh, were here for about seven years and now live in Hamilton, And but I was talking to her and it was it was cold and snowing outside, and I said, uh, well, at least you had a, a fairly decent drive up and to where we, we, were, we had met. And she says, oh, I don't like the winter. I don't like the winter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, but at yeah. the same time, uh, for, for many, it's sort of, you, you accept it because it simply is. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're absolutely bang on there. There is, a um, on one hand, for those of us who are used to it, there is an assumption that it just is. But for someone who is new to the community, it's, oh, my golly, what have I stepped into? <laughs> how do you find the the were the stories positive generally or did you did you find that um there was a there was some pain there as well there was definitely a lot of pain like that they've endured like from their homeland but also like the process of kind of getting comfortable in a new area in a new country in general and especially with culture shock a lot of people spoke about that experience and it was really difficult for them and yeah let's see yeah. but with the pain like once they were able to go get over like all the challenges the major challenges that they faced that they found like a positive uh, not not ending but like a positive path to like a bet like a better or more fulfilling even the even the understanding that hey i'm not alone mm -hmm. it's probably a, a breakthrough uh, i would hope that, that someone realizes oh okay uh, my feeling of isolation or or hurt or or cold i'm not alone right. it, it's a it's a fascinating topic you you've touched on because it it really does connect us to um a group of people we we may see but we don't know mm -hmm. um did you find that that um, having family support was important? Yes, I would say that a lot of the stories included family members who had like previously immigrated before them, and that's kind of what drew them. But there's also other ones where they had made like a lot of like support system within the community, and that's what made them want to stay in this community too. Right. So they were able to develop a support system out of their arrival. Yes. Did anyone comment on um, employment challenges? Yes, actually, a lot of people um, 
said that employment was a big struggle when they first got here. Um, a, if they had a language barrier, like how do they how do they communicate like what's happening at the job and stuff like that? And B, some of the credentials that might were that were valid in their countries are not the same here. So you have to like retake those courses. Um, for example, we have an individual in the in the book who was a lawyer and he had to take his um, exams again here. And same with like being a teacher, you had to go back to school to get your credits and then be able to get a job here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't an easy task at no. all. No, it was not. Yeah. And we hear stories of um, people who have a PhD who are driving a taxi or who are uh, doing some kind of uh, uh, minimum wage job simply because that's all they could qualify for because that's all they all they could do. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. If I were to ask you, where would you like to see improvement? If there were changes that you could make right now, if 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 you you were all powerful, <laughs> if you were all powerful, what changes would you like to see? To think about this one, <laughs> I would say more promotion for these organizations because I know a lot of people that run them and they're amazing people and just having this support system mm -hmm. and being aware of it is so important to make it a smoother migrate immigration. Like obviously it's going to be hard, but being able to have access to these sources is really important. And if no one knows about them, then it makes it really hard for them to be of use to people. Yeah, I agree with Isla. I think it's it is really important to build like a strong foundation around you, so you are so you are able to go up from like all the struggles that you are facing. So I agree with her when she says that. Let, let me let me take this another uh, amp this up just a notch. If you were if you were the Prime Minister of Canada, what would you do? I don't know. Um... Would you change the immigration laws? Would you change the, the, the immigration process? I mean, what you're describing are, 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 are barriers. Mm -hmm. How would you lower those hurdles? Dream, dream big, as they say. <laughs> I think maybe some of these organizations could be promoted like provincially. So have them like accessible through like the government of Canada's website, probably like some of them are, but more like provincially, but if we have them more spe like specialized to the gray and Bruce community, then you'd get like more retention rate to that community specifically because it's already so rural. So if you have like a specific community noted on like the government of Canada, that's more like official, then it might, help to have more promotion for that. That's an interesting idea. I, I, this is going to sound really uh, out of the box, but sell Gray Bruce as a destination for people who, are, who want to come here or who want to come to Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, when I was doing some, some work in another field, everybody wanted to go to Toronto. Everybody wanted to go to Toronto, and don't get me wrong, Toronto is a is is a is a great place for some people, um, and and there's a, it's a place where there's a whole variety of of, of um, cultures, but at the same time there may be people who want to take a, a leap, a jump, and and go okay, let's try Grey Bruce or try, um, Muskoka or try. Um, Belleville, Belleville or Trenton or some of the other places in the province or Niagara or Hamilton. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. Your, 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 your recording of stories, I think, is it, it sounds like it's a really important um, action to take because um, let, let me share what happens. Actually, I, I want to go back about three generations. The recording of stories became actually an, an important part of immigration recruitment. And I say this because I'm talking about my own family back years ago. They wrote books, which were bestsellers in England and Ireland. And that became, was a, a particular type of literature that actually became was very, very popular. People wanted to come to this country. 
And so what I'm hearing you say is, well, we need to update that stuff to talk about people who have come now. Well, let's let's talk, or more recently, let's say, let's talk about some of the success stories. What kind of success stories did you find? Um, success, well, success means something different to everybody, I would say. Um, I think the overline is that everybody's happy as to where they are now. Like they, everybody shared that they struggled in the beginning and they had some obstacles, but they didn't stop. They had inspiring words, like inspiring motivation advice for everybody else to say that the end goal to pursue that happiness is worth all the struggles that you face and all the challenges that you have to overcome. And I think that's what, I think that's what's really like the success part of their stories. And then also just for certain people, they said that success to them was just even finding something as simple as like a safer homeland, which is really like touching to kind of like hear someone say that too, because we also like don't think about it too much because we live in a really nice area where it's like everything is really secure and things, but like some people won't have that before, but to someone else that's coming here, that might be like their perfect like success basically. Sure. Sure. And, and when you think about it, the, the, the underlying narrative of conflict is, is one of those things that I think is, has underlying, undergirded immigration to Canada for many years. Um, that it's not something that we are as aware of as we might be for those of us who have been here any length of time. You know, we, like you said, we're a bit insulated. Perfect insulin in this country. So, so you know, what you found was there was a lot of positive um, stories that were that are there. And was this the goal? One of the goals of the pencil project to get those stories out there. Yes, it was our main goal was to focus more on success. So all of them had like a really good outcoming, like by the end of the story, like they were able to say that they're really happy and great Bruce with the life that they have. But that was our main focus was success because we find that a lot of people like tend to focus on like negative perceptions or experiences of immigrants. So we wanted to focus on like the more good that they're doing for the community and like the positive impact that they can have on other people. Sure. Did you come to any conclusions as to why people leave? I mean, the 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 the, the numbers that I read earlier are are quite shocking. Mm -hmm. Did you I, ever come to a conclusion about why people leave? I think it does ultimately my one of the factors that it does come down to is being able to build that support system. And if you're not able to build that support system, it 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 does become more challenging. And I would say and maybe that's one of the few reasons that people do decide to leave because Gray and Bruce may have just not given them the support area, the support that they needed in the moment. Mm -hmm. I know in my, my own work over the years, um, one of the things I've discovered is that when you have a, a small, just one family from a particular country or cultural group who come to a community, it doesn't matter. It's not just not Gray Bruce, but it's elsewhere. If they are not able to find some cultural connection, that they do tend to leave within a year or two because um, and migrate to larger centers where there are more people who have um, similar or of their own culture. It's just because they can't, the, the resources aren't there. At the same time, when we've got a larger number of, of people who are from a I'll use. I'll just say in general, South Asia. They tend to to find people who are of similar cultures. I gather, and that's been at least that's been my observation. And uh, they tend to stay. And uh, so you start to see things like churches springing up, or hey, here in Owen Sound, we have a mosque, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a that's a particular religious group that has come that comes together. Great. Great. Did you find that that um, those cultural organizations do make it do make a difference, or did they, did your correspondents uh, note that that those that cult, local cultural organizations um, were helpful? Yes, the people that did mention organizations that helped with their immigration, they said that it was extremely helpful, especially the Arden Language Center in Own Sound. It's not 
um, open anymore, but that one was in several of the stories. And they said that it really helps them kind of connect with other people. And also, so everyone there was learning English as a second language for anyone who doesn't know. And having other people who are kind of going through the same thing, like Gia said earlier, and just knowing you're not alone from like starting from scratch for a new language was really helpful for people. So. Yeah, um, kind of like, um, I won't say a shared burden, but a shared goal. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And same with church. Uh, I think uh, people, there were a couple interviews that we did. They said that just going to church and having that, like, having that comfort, that familiar familiarity in like a new country was also something that um, like motivated them to keep going. Like they had some familiar aspects that also helped them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because when you start to get into religious values and religious um, rituals, there is common global, um, there is a global commonality. Uh, I've heard it said that you can walk into a Roman Catholic mass in any country in the world and the mass format is the same. Um, I've been, a friend of mine actually walked into a, a, a church in Africa, as he told the story, and he could not speak the language, but he knew the 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 rhythm of the words that that the rhythm and even even the hymns that they sang, the songs that they sang were the same, were were very similar, and he felt quite at home uh, in that. And I think I I would hope the reverse would be true that uh, people would be open and welcomed here in Canada as well. So, um, what are you going to do with this project? You've got research. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> so we have the, like the book being published, and our plan is to distribute this to different public libraries and schools within the Gray and Bruce counties, and then also just different settlement service like organizations that we had talked about before. And hopefully, like newcomers can like read them if they would want to, and just kind of like have something to sympathize with, like restarting in a new country. And then also like the candidates will receive their copies too. Um, I think like we don't have really any more plans for like additions to this project um, because yeah the book is kind of like our end goal but we might do like a book um, a book okay. yes thank you <laughs> so yeah yeah have you thought of doing it on a web putting it on a web page or anything like that well we do have our website um, pencilproject.ca uh, I think we at one point did talk about maybe putting like a story up there one or two just to kind of give like a like an overview about what the book is and some of the stories that are in it but I don't know if we'll put the entire book online that we haven't thought about that I guess <laughs> well that's one of that's one that's one of the next steps yeah that's one of the next steps perhaps mm -hmm. um have you ever considered doing doing some um, speaking on on this this research? Or do you think there'd be organizations that would like to hear your story and what you discovered? Yeah, I imagine there would be some interested. Some of um, the one organization that donated was the Kembles Women's Institute, and we were planning to speak with them and give them a copy of the book as well once it's published too. So there definitely are some organizations, and a lot of people have reached out saying once it's published, like give us a copy. So definitely a lot of people are interested, and I think that having like the book reveal or whatever would like interest a lot of people to come. Oh, I think so. I, I think so. I think that that you've done a you've done a marvelous uh, marvelous piece of work here. But let let me ask you another question: Is this helped you with your future plans? You're 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 in uh, your last year of high school. Has this has this helped you develop some ideas of where you might want to take your life? I think that it has definitely provided us with um, like a new perspective on challenges and struggles and how to kind of tackle them to get to, you know, to go to where we want to be. Um, it has definitely taught us, like the project itself has definitely taught us some valuable skills in terms of like organizing and managing. And I think all those valuable skills that will come helpful for university. Mm -hmm. Is that one of your goals? University? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. I, um, I, I think so. Yes. I'm still waiting to hear back from a couple, but university, yes, that is the goal right now. Any area, any area that you want to focus on? Um, for, you know, I, well, I want to be a nurse, I think. So that's mm -hmm. what I've applied to. And I think at, at the end, I want to be a doctor. But nursing. Well, you, baby steps, baby steps, of baby course. Steps. So nursing is the goal right now. And then sure. once I attain that goal, you never know. Maybe it'll change. That's right. I, I mean, that's, that's great that you've got a goal. And uh, it, I suspect that this will this work will influence where you, you know, where you end up. That's just my speculation. Okay. Uh, well, so what's your what's your goal? Are you after you, you graduate from high school? Where are you headed? Um, I'm also planning university, and then pro probably like underneath the sciences as well, and then get an undergrad, and then apply to med school. Also, to be a pediatric surgeon is the long goal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you right now that both that, that that physicians, doctors, and nurses are all desperately needed in Gray Bruce and in this country. So, um, best wishes to the both of you. This is this is uh, this is but actually this is a marvelous project. Now, one final question: um, <clears throat> What if I wanted to obtain a copy of this book after it's formally published? And it's uh, early January, mid January right now. When, uh, when, when, what's your pub? When do you plan to have this published? So we're currently planning to send the book in for publishing next Monday for like the first copy, and then we can like proof it, and then the next copy will probably be in. We're printing two hundred for like the first print run, so that'll be in probably mid February, I'd assume, because it's like a big quantity. Um, but we're still open to doing more print runs as well. Um, but you could always email us at the pencil project at gmail.com or on our Instagram pencil project 2023 as well. If you'd like a copy too. Well, it sounds like a great project. Well, it is a great project, but it sounds like it's got a, a great future. And it sounds like you've learned, you've both learned a lot mm -hmm. from this. So it's, uh, it's the kind of thing that uh, actually, dare I say it warms my heart. Because what it does is you've you've, you've given us actually given us a, a sense of hope, and for that I I want to say thank you. Well, um, uh, Jack Herkreja and Ilsa Graham, thank you both very much for being a part of HealthLink today. Great to hear your story, and uh, best wishes in all of your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. Hi, I'm Nico Addy. And I'm Ethan Burrows. Catch Attack Hockey on Rogers TV. Was that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000.